2-3 continuity. So how do we define a continuous function? So, you know, it's all about the graphing. Looking to avoid this or this, that sort of thing. Although we can have uh, this and it's still continuous. That's a, a corner, which is a problem in the near future, but we'll talk about it. So. Uh, no breaks, no jumps. No holes. No infinite discontinuities. i.e. vertical asymptotes. Hey, weren't we just working on those? It's like we're in the same unit, weird. Uh, why do we care? Uh, if it's continuous, then we can do calculus. And more to that, uh, this is in definitions. So it pops up in a once in a blue moon on a test where they'll say, you know, hey, what's going on here? And you say, nope, doesn't account for it because it's not continuous, therefore, blah, 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 blah. At which point you would say, no, seriously, it's not just a test question, at which point I would say, yeah, it's just a test question. I mean, it's an important thing to know, but it's not going to help your basic knowledge and understanding of calculus. So once following graph continuous, when is it not? So we're going to do that crazy stuff that looks like this from zero to four. And you would say, no, it's not. There's a jump. Well, I'm not done, except. At x equals one, there's a jump, two, there's a hole, and four, it ends. I don't know if I should put four. First off, it's not even labeled on the graph. There is a hole there, there's a solid part there. So yeah, let's four. I guess we can do that. So, all right, so left a little space above this one to try and maximize my paper. Continuity at a point definition. So an interior point, continuous, if there's a limit, oh, limits, right, got it. So if the limit is x approach to c of f of x equals f of c. In other words, not continuous because the limit here is one and the limit here is one, but the function is two. Hmm. So I guess I would break it into questions then. I would say the limit as x approaches c of f of x, does it exist? Well, then I'd say, does the function exist there? So does the limit exist? Does the function exist? And if so, does the limit equal the function there? So that's how I would rewrite this. All right. They get into a little bit at left point, end points, left end point, right end point. And they just say, you know, does it stay as it comes from a positive side if it's a right end point, from a negative side if it's a left end point? I'm just making sure that at the end points, everything's copacetic. You do not have to worry about that, but, you know, we might as well be completing our definitions. So, uh, we get some nonsense in here and uh, I, I gotta do it because it's my job, but I don't get too hung up on it. If a function is not continuous point, we say it's discontinuous at that point. Um, notice it uh, doesn't need to be in the domain. So for example, told you to memorize this one several times. 
y equals one over x. Well, is this continuous on its domain? And this is just a good example of the ticky tackness. And you'd say, no, see, there's a break. Yeah, but the zero is not in its domain. So I would say, yes. But at the same time, I would say it's discontinuous. at x equals zero. And you'd say, uh, what? And I say, well, exactly what it says. Don't get hung up. It is what it is. All right, so what's this GIF function? Well, that's the uh, INT, also known as, uh, yeah, that's right, the double bracket thing. also known as the greater integer function. It basically says, just give me the uh, integer part. So 1.2 becomes one, 0 0.9 becomes zero. It gets confusing below because zero, negative 0 0.8 becomes negative one. Like what? Yeah, well, that's the way it works. All I know is that I go to zero and I fill in the dot, and then I go to one and I open it and then off we go. I wouldn't say I have it memorized, but But yeah, maybe you could say that. Um, so then we just keep going with the pattern. Notice this stands for function. So it's got a pass vertical line test, which it does. All right, so what's the domain? Just for the fun of it. All reals, uh, well, I really should write it as negative infinity to infinity. And it's continuous. Well, no, it ain't. Continuous on its domain, eh, not really. The domain covers everything. So it's continuous everywhere. And hopefully you see what's coming, <laughs> except. At all integers. Zero, one, negative one, two, dot, 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 dot. All right. So careful. This doesn't say it's continuous. So it's continuous except that I could write, you know, suppose I could do this, dot, dot, dot. Um, no, it would be, forget the dot, dot, dot. It'd be one of these things, dot, dot, dot. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, dot, dot, dot. That just seems kind of tacky. <laughs> And also it's so you know you can write it any way you want. You shouldn't get hung up on my notation. Yes, it's what they want on the AP exam, but you know, they're also flexible. As long as you show them you know what the heck you're talking about. So we got your jump discontinuity. That's where we go. Mm, yeah, there's two differences. By the way, it doesn't need to be filled in. I just usually fill it in anyway. Then you got your, oh, by the way, I know I forgot. This would also be jump discontinuity. You might say that's, no, that's that's removable or something stupid like that. Well, let me finish what I'm doing. Infinite, love some of these words. Essential, really, really. Okay, so an asymptote, essential, great word, love it. Removable, isn't that one on the upper? Shut up, let me finish what I'm doing. Sheesh, pushy, pushy, pushy. The removable is just whole. Because then we can rewrite it and say, well, this is the function except that x equals negative two, it equals yada, yada, we can do that. And my personal favorite, the oscillating, at which point I get accused of having talked to Mr. Zell a lot. And I say, no, no, that'll, that'll never happen. Um, so this thing is gets more and more oscillating. It gets closer and closer and closer. 
I don't know the function off the top of my head, but I have seen it before and it just gets uh, like that. And what happens is you get closer and closer to zero, it keeps bouncing up and down forever. So there's actually not a um, final answer there. It just keeps oscillating forever. I say, well, can I put in zero? I said, no, there's a you know, discontinuity at zero because it's not defined. So yeah, tricky stuff. So I already covered this. Continuous functions, one is continuous at every point of its domain. Notice I showed you earlier, one over X is continuous on its domain. Any function is continuous on an interval if and only if, so can use every point on the interval. So we have two questions here. Is the function continuous on its domain? Yes. Is it continuous on the function on the interval? No. So I can't stop emphasizing this. What is this crap? I don't know, and I don't care. This never pops up. But what it is is practice for my favorite thing in math. It's not my favorite thing. It's actually a thing that drives me nuts. Got to read the full question. Always read the question. And as soon as you race through the question in calculus, you're done. That includes yours truly. I think I can do it quickly. <laughs> I've been doing this for some No, slow down, read the question, right? Um, by the way, algebraic functions, continuous functions are continuous. So like if F is continuous and G is continuous, we put them together, then we would say that's also continuous, assuming F and G are continuous. Did I spell that right? I feel like I spelled that very wrong. Continuous. Wow, that was painful. Uh, what about composite functions? Yep, that works too. F of G, which, pardon me, I can never really write. If F is continuous and G is continuous, then this is also continuous. I can't do it. You struggle with your OCD, I struggle with mine. Joe, this is continuous. Well, Let's go with this one. And by the way, continuous, I mean on the domain or what? Just show it's continuous. Well, here's a function. And we know that's continuous because it does this. And then if I were to graph x sine of x over x squared plus two, I would find it's also continuous because there's nothing but the bottom created zero. So there's no holes, no asymptotes, nothing. So that one works. So then I know that F of G and at which point you go, do I really need to know this? And I say, no. But you know, that's a U. This is why we do math, so we can get on top of things. Now, we, we, we're building up the definitions that are actually somewhat critical. Intermediate value theorem. If the function is continuous, takes on every value from there to there. So let's throw this down here and then we'll put it in a box. A, B, uh, F of B, F of A. It does some weird kind of thing and we know it's continuous. It takes on every value. We don't miss anything. Every value meaning the Y values. Also known as the f of x values. All right, that's the intermediate IDT by the intermediate value theorem. If it's continuous, and that's why I spent all this time talking about continuity, because we'll have this. Oh, can you expect every value on the AP test? Yes, because it's continuous. Therefore, by the IDT, just nonsense. 
All right, so what that means is what I just showed. We've only changed curve, no jump, no breaks. Here, give me two functions that are non-continuous. All right, I'm just gonna repeat myself. The greatest integer function and y equals one over x. Yeah, like that. So is any real number exactly one less than the cube? This is a stupid application, but yeah, what are you gonna do? Any real number exactly one less than the cube? Is any number its cube? Oh, one less than that. So by the intermediate value theorem, there's no holes here. So yes, I put this all together. I get x to the third minus x. I get over minus one equals zero. Any equal, yes, by the IVT. So you're at this point going, what? That doesn't make any sense. At which point I will say, correct. So don't worry about it, do some problems, just get used to the jump, the point, infinite discontinuities and everything else will take care of itself. Happy mathing.